Hey Jogger peeps, so today we're gonna talk about populating the Arctic like Vikings, which is convenient because this video is brought to you by Vikings War of Clans. Now I'm sure that just like me, many of you enjoy strategy games like the ones from the 90s and the 2000s, but with a 3D mobile format and over 3 million players online battling out between clans and countries, it's no wonder why this game became so addicting and popular in such a short amount of time. If you're one of my gamer Jogger peeps, try it out for five minutes and see for yourself. Download the game from the links in the description below this video and get 200 gold for a fast and successful start. Thanks Vikings War of Clans, you guys rock. So recently I came across this image off of Reddit that portrays two very different demographical subdivisions of our planet. One is a small splotch of red encapsulating Bangladesh and Northeast India, whereas the rest is a wide domain of blue regions covering enormous areas of land across every inhabited continent. Now here's the thing, each of those colors equals about 5% of the world's population. So you can imagine what that says about how our world functions in terms of where people like to congregate. Typically people like to inhabit areas that have water, resources, a good climate, comfortable terrain, and preferably a geographically advantageous location on the map. If you look at the picture though, you will notice that the largest and least densely populated area on the planet would be the far north and arctic regions. First of all, what exactly classifies as the arctic? Now the simplest categorization would be the arctic circle. The arctic circle is generally classified as anywhere that's north of 66 degrees latitude. This is the boundary in which the sun stays up for 24 hours for at least one full day during the summer solstice and stays completely down for at least one full day during the winter solstice. Technically, this is kind of like the true Arctic. To this day, out of over 7.4 billion people on the planet, only about 4 million people live in this region. The highest concentrations of people living in Russia and the largest Arctic city being Murmansk. Otherwise, if we're talking about general Arctic, you could also include the kind of close enough areas like the southern half of Greenland, Iceland, parts of the Nordic, parts of Alaska and Canada. Now, why don't many people live here? Well, obviously for one, it's cold. People don't like being cold, but also it's it's incredibly rough, like both in terrain and general survival. You're constantly battling nature with things like polar bears, choppy waters, limited sunlight, and pretty much everything wants to kill you. It's like the cold version of Australia. However, my theory is, if done correctly, the Arctic could be a potential place of human flourishing and urbanization. This is why I think a place like Iceland has seen some of the fastest economic development and infrastructure changes in the past half century. They revolutionized Arctic living. First of all, the Arctic is actually very abundant in natural resources, many of which are untapped. Today about 10% of the world's oil and a quarter of natural gas reserves comes from the Arctic alone. The largest deposits discovered being located in the Kara Sea above Russia and the Beaufort Sea above Alaska and Canada. However, the potential for more is definitely not out of the question. It's just nobody's excavating because it's incredibly difficult and tedious to go across the landscape. In addition, there's also a bunch of minerals. Everything from nickel, zinc, copper, gold, diamonds, and uranium can be found here. Flora is limited but still existent. You still have various species of lichens, algae, grasses, berries, and fungi that can be found everywhere. And of course, everywhere you go, you're almost guaranteed to have fresh water. That's important. Speaking of water, most Arctic regions get their energy through hydroelectric power, through dams on abundant rivers. Otherwise, areas close to the Mid-Atlantic fault line, like Iceland and Svalbard, are able to harness geothermal power through volcanic activity. So all of that means there's actually kind of potential. So what are some of the obstacles we would have to overcome in order to create this Arctic frozen utopia? Well, for one, construction and transportation. It is incredibly difficult when you have permanent frost, pockety tundras with glacial rebound crevices and pingos. I like that word, pingo. The ground can be very unpredictable in the Arctic because the water keeps freezing and thawing. So that means we would have to construct a certain type of road system and building code that would accommodate such terrain. Building Arctic roads can be kind of expensive. In Alaska, to combat the permafrost, many roads actually lay down a layer of polystyrene foam before they put on the asphalt. If we could build a durable network system of roadways, this would dramatically expedite the process of transferring resources and material. Then we could really get cracking. For homes and businesses, it would almost be like building on a different planet. If you go to certain places in the Arctic, you'll notice that a lot of buildings have a complex system of insulation and braced steel frames on concrete foundations, many with adjustable piers so that if the house starts tilting after the ground melts, they can crank it up and fix the problem by re-leveling. This means that an urban landscape might look kind of strange in the Arctic. This means that almost nobody would have a basement and you probably wouldn't build very high unless if you had a very wide, sturdy foundation. So I don't know. Hey, Maybe that means people would all live in like pyramids or like bubble shaped houses. Now the next thing you need, food. Now if people were to actually attempt livestock and agriculture in the Arctic, it would be a challenge, but not completely unthinkable. As mentioned in the Iceland episode, greenhouses might have to be a priority if there were to be a harvest of crops. However, there are about 40 to 50 different known species of edible plants and fruits and vegetables in the Arctic, like cloud, lingon, and crowberries, as well as seaweeds, roots, tubers, and fungi. If possible, maybe we could harvest these 
specific crops along the natural landscape so that it would be a little bit easier. However, there's pretty much no grains. So if you are paleo or gluten free, this might be your heaven. People in the Arctic are heavily dependent on meat though. For millennia, the majority of their natural meat consumption has been produced through hunting. Other than sheep, most livestock species don't do too well in the Arctic. A pig would freeze and die within hours. However, is it possible that we could domesticate Arctic livestock? Already certain people groups across the Nordics have mastered the art of herding reindeer and muskox, which provide a vital source of food in their diets. I highly doubt we could domesticate moose because they're way too aggressive and way too difficult to deal with, but if we could, that would be kind of cool. Can you imagine drinking moose milk? Ooh, that would be interesting, wouldn't it? In the end, Mother Nature's elements might be at their worst sometimes the further up north you go, but that's never really stopped us humans from venturing and conquering. We humans, we're pretty good at that. We're really good at adapting. I guess the biggest challenge would be finding people who would be willing to relocate up north to the Arctic. You have to be a special kind of intrepid breed of person who is willing to go out into the desolate, harsh, overcast tundras and start a new life in the cold unknown far away from the rest of civilization. It really is kind of like being those people that are like volunteering to be the first people to go to Mars and start a colony, except they can never come back to Earth. In this scenario, if you change your mind, you can just go back to civilization. So if you're an introvert that doesn't want to be around people, but you still don't want to worry about like breathing air and drinking water on a regular basis, just go to the Arctic and start your own settlement, you know? I guarantee you nobody's going to want to come and bother you. Tell me what you think about living in the Arctic and how would you set up a system in which people could flourish there? Hope you like this topical video. Subscribe if you want. Stay cool. Stay tuned.